Well, g'day there, YouTube. This is a video about a floating entertainment unit that I made for a family member. It's a large commission job, and I don't normally get to film these, but because it was for family, I could. Now, I haven't been able to capture everything, so excuse the roughness and choppy and changiness of it all, but sit back and enjoy. There'll be more photos in the end, and here's some of the build process next. So this is a entertainment unit project here that I'm just not made with. It's gonna be a polyurethane painted job, and it's all that 18 mil NDF with a big, thick 25 millimeter NDF bench top. The other half of this job is a bunch of really big floating shelves. So here's these floating shelves. They're made from an MDO product. It's a lightweight hardwood core. This stuff's almost like balsa. It's called Falcata. It's kind of like poplar and it's got a three millimeter NDF layer. It comes in a big sheet, three meter by 1200 sheet. And I've just cut out the walls that I've wanted and MDF lined all the visible faces. And these are gonna go off to the shop for um, polyurethane. We'll be fixing it to the wall by drilling through and fitting some threaded bar M16 rod into there, which is gonna be chem set into the Bessel block. About that much of it will be chem set and about that much will be sticking out. I'm just going to make myself a cup of coffee first. Okay, coffee in hand and we're ready to go. Um, what you're seeing me do here is create the pocket holes in the carcasses. I'm just um, making the boxes that go on the wall and the ones that go on the floor. So I'm using a combination of pocket screws and dominoes. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting the middle shelf um, using the domino with a spacer block and then the table. And if you get this just right, you'll get a dead center. So here's me explaining to you in super fast forward. And I'm going to use my laser and check how I did. Let's see how I went. Like a boss. Oh yes, I keep the bank rolling. Rightio, back to it. So what you've seen me do here is use regular Type on 2 for the dominoes into the raw MDF. And then where I'm joining the panels, which have a combination of raw MDF and white melamine coated MDF. I'm using type on melamine glue and that gives you a super strong joint to the melamine. And yep, I'm using um, pocket screws instead of clamps. I did do one with clamps and no pocket screws and I'd probably rather get a vasectomy again than repeat that process again. Um, yeah, so you can see the pocket screws pull everything together. I don't have to stress and wait for clamps and yeah, it's just much easier. And none of these pocket screws will be seen. They're all completely concealed by the rest of the joinery or by the wall. My head's really close to being out of it. I couldn't do that to you. I'm a beautiful man. Yeah, okay, I have problems. So what we're doing here is just making the two base units and you can see I use one domino to sort of just set that shelf in place and two dominoes in the bottom to get it centered and some screws to hold it in. Now whenever I'm screwing into MDF I use Infermax screws and they have a special tapered and stop bit like that and they look like this. They're basically a 60mm long Euro screw. And those director screws work really, really well in MDF and particle board. A lot better than regular wood screws or chipboard screws would. Right, just cleaning up the squeeze out. And again, two different glues. Um, and you'll see the pocket screws pull it together nicely and you get a good little bit of squeeze out. Great system, love it. So I need to join my um, pieces together for the kickboard and what I have are these polyurethane painted um, kickboard panels and I've got to make a concealed mitre joint and get that joint together. Now I do have a domino but I've found that the domino is not terribly accurate when you're doing this. So when it really counts like this I use the down max with the 45 degree accessory and I'll just be drilling my dowel holes into there you can see that I can get three well-spaced um, dowels in there and just get a much better, stronger joint. And I'll show you the type of accuracy I can get with that. And let's see how she fits. No camera tricks here, this is my first go. Yep, 
Let's get a better look at that, shall we? So it's perfectly flush along there. Now this is a kickboard. This faces the floor. So really all we're going to see is that there. And that's a perfect joint. There you go, Dalmax. So what I'm doing here is using my Craig shelf pin jig with an auxiliary fence on it. Now once you do that little mod to it, you've turned it into a System 32 drilling jig. And basically whenever you've got high-end European hardware, it's usually all done in System 32. And watch how these guide pins will just slip in and those built-in Euro screws will just fit perfectly because it's all set up for System 32. Good tip there for you. Okay, and again I'm going to use it down here for fixing the plates. Now I'm going to be using 11mm Euro screws. So, so I'm drilling the first hole in using the guide pin, using the tool as a compass to set my second point. Another guide pin, if you have two of these you can use two guide pins. And these other two holes will just fall right in alignment. 11mm screws. So Euro screws are great where you've got a thin board and you've got to get a strong bond because they engage with the side wall very strongly and they don't need depth for strength. Okay, now here's the first completed box and these Haferlay uh, lift stays are really nice. They are soft close and automatic open. And they're the same price as the garbage you can buy from Bunnings, that Prestige rubbish. Um, but they have a great deal more adjustment, they've got neat cover caps that cover all that mechanical nastiness and they operate very well and I think they're made in Belgium or somewhere like that, they're very nice, not Chinese made. Um, you can adjust up, down, skew, side to side, in and out, how slowly it closes and how quickly it opens, very good system. And uh, that material there, that board is Egger Fieldwood in Sand Orleans Oak. So this is a beachside property, property and this weathered oak sandy colour worked really nicely. Egger Fieldwood is textured as well as coloured and printed so it, it really is one of the best non-timber veneers I've seen. Okay here we go, installation day. Now I've drawn up the pattern on the wall. If you look closely you'll see the entire unit is laid out on the wall and what we're doing here is we're drilling in the anchors these anchors have got 120mm pins which go into these holes that I'm now drilling and I'm just eyeballing these and I've got them pretty much bang on eyeballing so yeah there you go now getting it all level and you'll see I use a stand the stand there to just um, have a bit of a lean pull the lean out of it and then drilling into the brick for this um, the first of these boxes these boxes do all the work. They carry everything, they level everything, they are structural they're for alignment. Now I'm drilling in through it with my right angle driver there and you'll see I'm going to use some screws to pull that gap out of the two components there. And there's my uncle-in-law helping out. Nice bloke, also made me coffee. Thanks very much Uncle Paul. Um, yep, top goes on. Right, this next very long one here, I couldn't get a board this long, so that is dominoed and pocket screwed together. And you can see that joint falls right where the two cupboards overlap, so it's completely concealed by the cupboard and by the transition in the doors. Having a little chat there about life. Okay, now we're going to screw this one in with anchors and plugs, and have to make it very strong because it's doing most of the work. And there's a, a wing off to the right and one off to the left. These only serve a visual purpose, so they only have one steel bracket and then they're screwed into the side of the cabinet. And there's the uncle and the auntie both helping out. Now I've just got the base unit and I've joined that together and I'm now putting the kickboard on. And it all just falls into place and looks like one piece when it's done. And now for that big bench top, it's going to come in. Uh, first I'm putting the shelf pins, there you go, the bench top. 16 screws to hold this down and you can see me going back and forth into getting it just right so that the overhang's equal on both ends, about a half a mil overhang. There we go, nicely screwed down. Now I'm clicking these doors on. These doors were cut out of a single length so that we've got continuity in the grain all the way across. The supplier got it wrong so they had to do it twice. They had to order a new sheet in from Belgium to make that happen. And I've designed them so that they sit uh, just flush with the extents of the cabinet and with an inset kickboard it kind of looks like it's floating. And here it is all finished. 
enjoy these photographs. Um, it came out really nice, very modern, very clean looking, very functional too. Thanks for watching. Um, as always, I love you and mm -hmm, good. Bye.